So what do you think is the best way to waterproof a shower or a bathtub surround? This is a question I get a lot over on Home Repair Tutor. So today, I wanted to make a video and show you how to waterproof a shower or a bathtub using three different methods. So this is going to be really cool and in the end, I want to get your input on the three different method methods. So stick around because you're going to like this video and I think it's going to bring up a lot of insight and new skills that you may not be aware of. And that's always kind of cool. So let's dive into it right now. The first method to waterproof your tub is with cement board. We're placing one inch spacers on the tub deck such that the cement board will sit above the tub lip. And then Steve, my co-founder of our bathroom repair tutor, is marking the position of the prefabricated niche on the cement board. What he's going to do is cut that out. So first, what Steve is going to do is make a chalk line on it for the horizontal location. And then he's going to mark the vertical locations using two by fours and then cut it out using an angle grinder with a tile saw blade. So that's how you do that. Now here's the deal. You should only be using alkali resistant screws when installing cement board. Put them in one inch from the edge and then eight to 10 inches within the field of the cement board. So Steve is dry fitting the top piece here. And again, he's just going to cut out a section so that the niche will fit into the cement board, or the cement board will fit around the niche, rather. So again, 8 to 10 inches with the alkali-resistant screws within the field, and you should be good to go. Now, another way to cut cement board is with a utility knife or a carbide tip knife with a square, so in this case, a drywall square. We're putting the piece of cement board up on the back wall, not the plumbing wall. Again, it's 1 inch above the tub deck. Place your screws in place. And then we're butting the cement board up against the drywall for this back wall as well. So for the plumbing wall, you always want to have your drywall in place first. Then get your measurements for the mixing valve. Transfer those to the cement board along with the tub spout measurements. And then what you can do is make perfectly cut holes for those. Steve's using a one inch paddle bit for this, nothing special. And then for the mixing valve, he is going to be using a three inch hole saw. So they'll give you perfect cuts for the holes for the tub spout and the mixing valve. Place your cement board one inch above the tub deck again and then screw it into place. You do the exact same method for the shower head hole that's above the mixing valve location. So again, just use a one inch paddle bit and your half inch copper will fit right through there for the shower head. You want to butt up, butt the cement board up against that drywall. So in this case, we had to put a little piece of cement board in place between the tub and the drywall. Now, you have to waterproof your cement board. There's no getting around this. We're using Ardex 8 Plus 9 in this tutorial, and they use a mesh to help out with the all the different transitions. So what we're doing is placing green painter's tape, use any kind of tape to put it on the tub deck, and fill in that gap between the cement board and the tub using the Ardex 8 Plus 9. That's going to waterproof that space. And then you're going to put mesh over top of that. But Steve right now is rolling on, on the Ardex 8 Plus 9 to waterproof all of the cement board. Again, you have to do this in order to ensure your cement board isn't going to leak water through it. So as you can see, Steve is using the mesh here, the Ardex 8 Plus 9 mesh. We're using that in lieu of al alkali-resistant tape uh, because that's what the Ardex 8 Plus 9 directions call for. You can also use HydroBand, RedGuard, etc., but you have to waterproof cement board. It's a must. And when you're done waterproofing, pull the painter's tape up from the tub deck. The second method is Schluter Curry Board. You want to make sure, though, that your walls are nice and plumb and level. And what we like about Curry Board is it's light. And, again, you want to mount it right above the tub lip using their screws and washers. The nice thing about Curry Board, besides it being light, is it's easy to cut. So you can score it with a utility knife. It'll cut easily. You can trim it that way. So they have specific instructions on how to install it. You want to put a screw in a washer in every 12 inches, and your stud should be 16 inches on center at a minimum for a half-inch board. But follow the Schluter instructions, and you should be good to go. So again, 
The nice thing is you can score out the area where you want to put your niche. And then you can install your niche, trace around it, cut around it with a utility knife, and then you can install the niche in that location. That's what Steve is doing here. He's picture framing that that Schlitter curdy board and then placing the niche in the in in within the in the uh, the stud bay. So anyhow, you can pinch the niche to the curdy board using the screws and the washers. This is very simple to do. Anybody who knows how to use an impact driver or a drill can do this. So curdy boards easy to use. I'm pretty sure any DIYer can install it. So again, you just score it with a utility knife, just like actually it's easier than drywall. Steve is cutting the last board that we're putting in place here between the ceiling and the first curdy board. So again, you can just scribe cut it no problem and we make it flush with the ceiling. So a nice flush cut, install it using the screws and the washers and you should be good to go. Just super simple to use and the nice thing about it is it has grid lines on it so you can cut it easily. So here's the back wall, very similar to cement board. You just put it in place. You want to cut everything to size. And Steve is actually cutting out a hole for the tub spout using a utility knife. He places the board on the wall and boom, he's going to hit it there, puncture it to mark the location of the mixing valve. And then he's going to cut out the mixing valve using that same inch, that same three inch hole saw. So super simple anybody anybody can do it so again you just put everything in place put a little piece of curdy board between the tub and the adjacent drywall now what we did is mix up some unmodified thin set so unmodified thin set pancake batter consistency you're going to put this in the space between the tub and the curdy board now this is steve preferred method Curdy doesn't recommend this, but this is what Steve likes to do. And then you can put the Curdy band over top of that. So you embed the Curdy band into the unmodified thin set using a drywall knife, so a six inch drywall knife. You do the bottom positioning first with the Curdy band. What we're explaining here is instead of using the unmodified thin set, you can actually fill in that gap between the curdy band and the tub using curdy fix. So you put curdy fix in that gap. Then you put your unmodified thin set on the curdy board and embed your curdy band. So that's a that's the Schluter preferred method for waterproofing between the curdy board and the tub. So if you want their warranty to be upheld, you follow their directions. So in this case, what we're doing is we're applying unmodified thin set to the corner. Then we're overlapping the curdy band over top the bottom band that we just put in place. Again, you're just using the six-inch drywall knife. So curdy board's really, really, really easy to install. I can't emphasize that enough. You want to put the curdy band wherever two curdy boards meet, wherever the niche is embedded into the wall. So you want to put the curdy board curdy band there and then you put the unmodified thin set over any screw and washers and put a little strip of curdy band over top of those and that way when you smooth those out you're going to waterproof all the screws and the washers and a little nice tip here is to, to kind of smooth that out using a damp sponge and that will give you a nice solid surface for your tile to be adhered to so the transition between the curdy board and the drywall again you just use curdy band you want to smooth out or take off any of the thin set that is left on the drywall the third and final method for waterproofing a shower or a tub is to use weedy building panels now we like these a lot because they're easy to install like curdy curdy board and you use screws and washers just like you do for curdy board now weedy makes their own screws and washers and we recommend that you buy those because they're obviously manufactured for weedy building panels. And they have their own specifications on how far you should be uh, installing the screws and the washers from the floor and within the field. But you always want to apply the weedy joint sealant on top of adjacent boards and embed one board on top of the other board and sandwich it together using that weedy sealant. Now, weedy is easy to cut too. So Steve just used a uh, paddle bit to cut that hole in it and what you do is you can pinch the washers and the screws in between the two boards you can do this too with Schluter, Schluter curdy board and then you put you smooth out the joint sealant we're going to touch that further a little bit later on in the video but you want to smooth out that joint sealant you can cut the weedy building panel with an oscillating multi-tool 
or a utility knife. You can build out your own niche using it. All you need is the weedy sealant, the weedy building panel, and the screws and the washers to build a custom niche. It's really that simple. And it's cool for older older homes that have really weird dimensions. So again, you can cut it out. You can cut out your hole for the mixing valve using a hole saw. And then you want to apply weedy joint sealant on any joints and any any washers and screw holes. And that will waterproof the weedy building panel. It's that simple. It's actually even simpler than the Schluter Curdy board. But each each method has its own pros and cons. So again, we added another layer of the joint sealant on all of the on all of the transitions between weedy building panels. That's what you want to do. That's what Steve is doing here for the custom niche. We built this shower, this walk-in shower in only four hours using the weedy building panel. And if you wait two hours, you can actually start tiling over top of it. So those are three different methods for how to waterproof a shower or a bathtub. I hope that you like this video. Lots of really great new concepts in it. So down in the comments, so down in the comments here on YouTube or back on over at homerepairtutor.com, let me know which one method, so which one method you would use in your bathroom if you were to remodel it. And I think it's really cool to open up this discussion because in the comments, I typically end up answering a lot of questions. So that is it for today. Oh, the other one thing I wanted to let you know about is this. Steve and I came up with a free bathroom remodeling video series for you. So this is great because it's gonna help you remodel your bathroom faster, easier, and cheaper by showing you different skills like the ones we went over today. And you can check that out right here. So just click right here, it'll take you over to the sign up form and you'll get that instantly today. So that pretty much is it. That, that wraps up the video for this week. Remember, a new one comes out every single Tuesday at 8 a.m. So you can count on a new video every single week and I don't want you to miss out on that. You can always subscribe by clicking the subscribe button here. All right, I'll see you down in the comments Comments. Have a great day. Thanks for watching. Talk to you soon. I accidentally hit this button, which sprays this shower head. It went all over me while I was shooting the video. Funny stuff. That's what happens when you try to make YouTube videos in a shower. <laughs>